this particular passage of scripture with the subject, the power of the king. The power of the king. And a subtitle, Come in the Storm. Come in the Storm. Four points we want to emphasize. The first one being power over disease. Power over disease. Two, power over nature. Power over nature. Three, power to forgive sins. Power to forgive sins. And four, power over death. Power over death. In the preceding chapters, which is chapter 5 through 7, is called the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus had a crowd around him, and the Sermon on the Mount tells us that he found himself uh, a place uh, on a mountain. Uh, and this mountain, we're not sure exactly which one uh, it was, but the Sermon on the Mount appears to be uh, just north of the Sea of Galilee. And he sat down and he began to teach his disciples. Now when we say he sat down and he began to teach his disciples, some would say that he only meant the twelve. But in that there were others in the crowd following him before he sat down on the mountain that could have been more than just the twelve. I mentioned the Sermon of the Mount because it's very important in leading up to our text today in chapter 8. Because Jesus taught the crowd or he taught the disciples uh, how to be obedient, uh, how to uh, demonstrate in their lives the things that he had taught them previously and he clarified uh, some things that might have been misinterpreted by the religious leaders. He taught them the main thing was uh, to listen to his teachings and to allow the Holy Spirit to interpret the intended meaning. He would say, in the past you may have said thus and such, or in the past you might have been taught, but then he would give you a clearer interpretation as to what the law and of the word was saying. I use the term the power of the king as a subject because Matthew portrayed the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the king in that he wrote primarily to the Jewish crowd however that word is for all of us. Chapter 8, uh, verse 3, Jesus healed a leper. So it shows that he has the power over disease, over nature, power to forgive sin, and power over death. 
Verse 13 in chapter 8, Jesus healed a centurion servant. Verse 15 begins the verses that talks about Jesus healing Peter's mother-in-law. Chapter 8, verse 16 says, When the evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word and heal all who were sick. That gives credence to Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4, that states, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. We will come to Chapter 9, which comes after our text, uh, and I'll mention that now. Uh, chapter 9, verse 2 through 4, he said to a paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you. Jesus and his disciples. After Jesus and his disciples came down from the mountain, they decided to cross the lake or cross the Sea of Galilee. This would also be called the Sea of Gennesaret or the Sea of Tiberias the same sea by different names. Uh, the Sea of Galilee is the lowest water lake on earth. 686 feet below sea level. Partly fed by the underground springs but its main source of water is the Jordan River which flows through it from north to south. In it, or that is, it is situated between the Golden Heights and the Galilee region, region of the Jordan Rift Valley. Consequently, it's subject to earthquakes and storms that approach suddenly. Boisterous wind swept in from the valleys between the hills and whipped the quiet waters of the Sea of Galilee. Whipped them into a fury in a very short time. A certain squall engulfed Jesus and the disciples as they were crossing the lake or the sea. Water began to fill the boat. Jesus went to sleep. Some of these were seasoned fishermen like Peter and his brother in particular. But they were afraid. But Jesus was calm. They had weathered other storms. And if you reflect on your life, life is like that sometimes. Spiritually speaking, there may not be a cloud in the sky. And without any noticeable warning, between elevations below normal sea level, spiritually speaking, and even in finance, and even no known enemy necessarily, then all of a sudden,
we find ourselves spiritually speaking too far out to roll to shore. What's the answer? Call Jesus. Call Jesus. That's what the disciples did. Even though he might ask Where's your faith? After rebuking the disciples, he rebuked the wind and the tempest was calm. Three gospel writers turned the rebuke that Jesus gave the disciples in a different way, but really making the same point. Matthew said, Why are you afraid, O men of little faith? Mark says, why are you afraid? Have you no faith? Two questions. Luke says, where is your faith? I've learned that fear thrives on the absence of faith. When we don't have the necessary faith, even though we might have had the teaching and the experience, we get a become afraid. But Jesus did not give up on them. I'm glad he didn't give up on them. And I'm glad today that he didn't give up on me. I can see and hear in my mind as he first rebuked the disciples and then he rebuked the wind and the sea and there was a calm. And no doubt the disciples would see that he had power over nature and they would reflect back that he had power over disease in the healings that, that had taken place. No doubt they would recognize probably long before this episode if they were not there, I'm sure they'd read about it, that he healed the widow's son at Nain. And when the wine gave out in Cana, he made wine from water, that is. Jesus is our total provision. Jesus is not limited in power. Jesus is not limited in authority. Jesus is not limited in understanding, Jesus is our all in all. I have a testimony, and I'm sure you do. I can remember when I was bound in sin, and when I sat up on a pew or a bench back in Meridian, Mississippi, that they used to call the Mona's Bench. And as the church prayed, and as I prayed, as the preacher preached the word of God, I can remember just as it was yesterday. Some folks said it happened to them on a Monday. Some might say Tuesday. But for me, it was doing a revival on a Wednesday evening. And I can remember reflecting on the word and the conviction of the Holy Spirit as I listened to the gospel proclaimed and the Zion songs that were sung and, and the Holy Spirit came up on me and as the old song says that sometimes it causes me to tremble. Oh praise his holy name. Point number four I want to close with that he showed not only that he had the power and authority over disease not only that he had power over nature and not only that he had power to forgive sin but he showed not just in resurrected others but he showed in his own life that he had power over death when he conquered death at Calvary. And if we really want to wrap up the story that it's all 
summed up in Calvary. Because we owed a debt that we could not pay. Jesus paid a debt that he did not owe. There were many good men on the earth. Men and women alike. But no one was able to stand in the gap to be in full perpetuation and ransom note for our sins. Like the ram tied in the bush that Abraham took instead of his son Isaac, Jesus became our provider, our ram, our real pastoral lamb, when he allowed them to drag him up an old rugged hill, when he allowed them to spear him in the side and to place a crown of thorns around his head, when he cried out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yes, and when he dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder, and he said, it's finished, the salvific process is finished. No more need for bulls and goats to be slaughtered. Now that he had willingly sacrificed himself and gone to a better sanctuary and ratified a better covenant built on better promises. Yes, he died. Yes, he gave us an opportunity for all of our sins to be forgiven. And they buried him in Joseph's new tomb. On Friday he died. But Sunday morning he got up. How many of you know that even though he died, he's not dead still? I know he's not dead because I can feel the power of the Holy Spirit deep down in my soul. Did I do it myself? No. I don't even have the power or the authority, but Jesus does. Not only did he regenerate me, and my hope is that he regenerated you, but according to his predestination, as he traced out beforehand, he called us, yeah, and I know he got up with all power, all authority in his hand, and he gave a command to the church, to the disciples first, go out and make disciples, baptize in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, yes, aren't you glad today?
Pastor Jenkins, we pray that you have been blessed. My name is Sister Felicia Jenkins, and we invite you to join us each week for timely messages from God. We realize that these are difficult times we're living in. If you have a special prayer request, please connect with us through our website. We also ask that you partner with Mount Olive by planting a financial seed to help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. May God bless you and keep you is our prayer.